the Chinese Communist Party is sending warplanes to threaten Taiwan. How will the world respond? Welcome back to China Uncensored, I'm Chris Chappell. China is celebrating National Day, and it comes with an official week-long public holiday called Golden Week. The original name was Red, like the spilled blood of class enemies week, but they really put a damper on people's vacations. I mean, any Chinese citizen who lives long enough will eventually be labeled a class enemy. But while the entire rest of the country is on holiday, there is one group of people working overtime, the People's Liberation Army. That's because the PLA is flying holiday sorties over the Taiwan Strait, which to Americans sounds kind of fun and jolly, like Chinese Santa Xi Jinping is sending his PLA elves over the Taiwan Strait with lots of goodies in their bags. That's because Americans don't know what a sortie is. China reportedly sent warplanes to the Taiwan Strait again on Sunday, marking the fourth consecutive day since the start of the eight-day holiday period. Well, that definitely sounds less fun than Santa Xi. According to Taiwan's Ministry of Defense, Taiwan scrambled fighters and deployed their air defense missile system to monitor the plane. They're probably used to it by now. Because China has conducted 51 warplane sorties in 16 days since mid-September. That's a lot of sorties. No wonder the PLA is working overtime. Well, it's also because they're a little bit behind schedule. We've talked in previous episodes about how the Chinese Communist Party ordered the PLA to be prepared to invade Taiwan by 2020. And as we all know too well, it's currently 2020. But according to Taiwan's defense ministry, China's military still apparently lacks the landing craft and logistical support needed to carry out a full-scale sea and air invasion. That's what Taiwan is saying. Yeah, the people the Communist Party is trying so hard to invade are telling the party that they're just not ready to invade yet. That's got to be embarrassing. And while 2020 has been an unextinguishable dumpster fire for most of the world, it's actually been a pretty great year for Taiwan. They re-elected Tsai Ing-wen as president, which was a blow to Beijing. They managed to beat the CCP virus, and the pandemic barely dented their economy. Because of their success, Taiwan is getting more international recognition and support than they have for years. And you know what that means. It's time for the Chinese Communist Party to ruin everything. And I'll tell you how after this short commercial break. Welcome back. The Chinese regime has been escalating its threats to Taiwan. Last month, my favorite Chinese state-run media, the Global Times, said that Taiwan's president Tsai Ing-wen was playing with fire by pledging deeper ties with the U.S. And it warned that if she does something to promote Taiwan's independence, a war will be set off and Tsai will be wiped out. So it sounds kind of like the Global Times just threatened to assassinate the president of Taiwan. But I'm sure they didn't mean it as a specific threat. It's just a basic safety warning. The Global Times is just saying, if Tsai doesn't look both ways before crossing the street, she could be hit by a bus. The Chinese Communist Party just happened to drive through a red light to run her over with. Safety first. China's propaganda machine has also been obsessed with threatening countries that support Taiwan, like the U.S., which Chinese state-run media constantly accuse of playing the Taiwan card. And the Communist Party just wants the U.S. to know that playing the Taiwan card won't work to contain China. The Taiwan card is doomed to fail, and the Taiwan card will only backfire. And, speaking of cards, some people in the U.S. and the island of Taiwan may think the Chinese mainland has few cards to play, and the mainland is afraid to play cards even if it has. But guess what? China has many cards to play. The key is which and how China is willing to play. Take that, the U.S. and the 
island, not country of Taiwan. I just have one question here. What kind of cards are we talking about? Is this poker? Gin rummy? Magic the Gathering? What's that, Shelley? Of course. It's Cards Against Humanity. Let's see here. The CCP plans to attack Taiwan with doing the right thing. Not going to happen. Uh, the violation of our most basic human rights. Already happening. Or flamethrowing midgets. Yeah, that works. I'm not saying it wouldn't be problematic on many levels, but I could see it happening. Anyway, the Chinese Communist Party's threats against Taiwan aren't limited to a war of words or cards. This summer, the PLA staged a training exercise on the island of Hainan that simulated an attack across the Taiwan Strait. They released this video from the exercise of a simulated beach assault on no island in particular. And the PLA is especially flexing their muscle in the air. Like I said earlier, they've flown dozens of warplanes through the Taiwan Strait within the last month. And on multiple occasions, those PLA planes have crossed the Taiwan Strait median line, the de facto border between China and Taiwan. Until last year, the PLA hadn't crossed the median line since 1999. They crossed it once last year, and at least five times so far this year. And the Chinese Communist Party has been pretty upfront about why they're doing it. The state-run media says it's designed to stoke fear and deliver a warning to Taiwan separatists. And it's conducting recon on both sides of Taiwan to gather intel for real combat. Plus, what's the big deal with crossing the Taiwan Strait Median Line anyway? It's just something fabricated by Taiwan Island and the U.S. in a sign of weakness. The truth is that the so-called median line of the Taiwan Straits is non-existent. Yeah, imagine someone making up a fake line in the middle of the ocean to assert their territorial claims. Huge sign of weakness. But the good news for Taiwan is that the rest of the world is actually paying attention to the Chinese regime's threats. And after a short break, I'll show you how. Welcome back. The rest of the world is really starting to pay attention to the Chinese regime's threats against Taiwan. And that's why more countries are offering Taiwan military, economic, and political support. The U.S. has ramped up its weapon sales to Taiwan. And the U.S. Navy has sent 11 ships through the Taiwan Strait this year in freedom of navigation exercises. And it's not just the U.S. Last week, a Canadian warship sailed through the Taiwan Strait. I didn't know Canada had warships either. But yes, even Canada has put its foot down. Panda-hugging Canada has finally grown a pair. And by pair, I mean a mustache and beard. Very manly. Good call, Mr. Prime Minister. And Taiwan has been getting more support from Europe as well. From EU parliamentarians urging support for Taiwan's democracy, to warmer trade ties between the EU and Taiwan. Speaking of trade, the U.S. and Taiwan have started economic talks, which China is of course upset about. That's because it interferes with the Chinese Communist Party's master plan to make Taiwan dependent on China economically, thus making it easier to take over Taiwan. Which means they definitely won't be happy with the fact that 50 U.S. senators are calling for a trade agreement with Taiwan or that the U.S. and Taiwan are planning to work on infrastructure projects together. The U.S. has been a huge advocate for Taiwan politically as well. Earlier this year, Congress passed and President Trump signed the Taipei Act, which supports Taiwan's international relations. And last month, the U.S. ambassador to the U.N. called Taiwan a force for good that should be allowed to join the U.N. That's probably not going to happen with China's increasing takeover of the UN. The Trump administration has also supported Taiwan by sending the highest ranking U.S. officials to visit Taiwan in decades. But the U.S. government has not yet taken the final step of restoring official diplomatic relations with Taiwan. That's something that might cause the Chinese Communist Party to activate those flamethrowing midgets. But who knows what could happen in 2021? What's that, Shelley? 
The Dalai Lama wishes to visit Taiwan in 2021? Yeah, the flamethrowing midgets are ready to launch. And before I go, I'm just curious what other cards I could use for the CCP plans to attack Taiwan with a thermonuclear detonation. I hope not. Nickelback, that's, that's crimes against humanity right there. Uh, David Bowie flying in on a tiger made of lightning. That would be surprising for many, many reasons. Uh, oh. Harry Potter erotica, that's something I know a thing or two about. Check out the BuzzFeed article, you'll, you'll get it. Uh, vehicular manslaughter, uh, Chinese pilots have been known to crash their planes from time to time. Axe body spray, another crime against humanity. <sighs> a cooler full of organs, uh, that's worth a lot of money. I don't think uh, the party's gonna use that on Taiwan. Not wearing pants, I mean, that's something I can get behind as well. Not actually behind, behind, uh, but you know what I mean. Or, oh, Joe Biden. Uh, don't forget to register to vote. Those are pretty good. But I think you, my brilliant and talented viewers, could do better. What do you think the CCP plans to attack Taiwan with? Leave your ideas in the comments below or draw them. Email them to me at chinauncensored at gmail.com. And if you like the show, be sure to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. Remember, we publish new episodes every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. And if you really like the show, please support us on the crowdfunding website Patreon over at patreon.com slash chinauncensored. Thanks for watching. I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.